All right, stand by because we want to go to our Ed O'Keefe, CBS News political correspondent, who is standing by with Senator Amy Klobuchar. Ed. Elaine, thank you. Uh, Senator Klobuchar, thanks for joining us. Um, thank you, Ed. Your thoughts on how tonight went? I thought it was great. Um, I, you know, when you're up there with all those candidates, you want to say more and there'll be more debates. But my major points was to show uh, that in the end, we're going to be running against Donald Trump, whoever this candidate is. So I, a number of times, showed how he hasn't delivered on his promises, whether it's saying we'd be safer uh, with Iran, whether it is on pharmaceutical prices, uh, whether it's on infrastructure. And I think that point needed to be made more. Um, and I tried to make it. It did seem like he was... Uh, maybe an elephant in the room that didn't get mentioned much by the rest of the field for some reason. Yeah, I, I don't know. But in the end, you know, if you're the candidate, which I want to be, you got to be on that stage with him and show that you're going to deliver and how you're going to beat him. Because in the end, that's the one thing that unites our party. And I would say uh, independents and some moderate Republicans, uh, they want to win. What was the one issue maybe you didn't get to expand as much on that you would have liked to share more of your thoughts about. I would have liked to talk a little bit more about elections. It's so timely and the Russian interference and the fact that Donald Trump's White House literally stopped us in our tracks. Um, I would like to talk a little bit more about guns and my role in um, trying to close the boyfriend loophole. Uh, but in the end, my favorite moment of the debate is when uh, Governor Inslee uh, uh, said that he was the only one on the stage that had been, the implication was leading on women's rights. And I thought to myself, you know what, this is historic. For the first time, we have literally doubled the number of women that have ever participated in a Democratic presidential debate in history. We did that tonight. And here he's saying that. So I said, uh, I think there's three women on the stage that have done all right on women's rights. Where do you go next after tonight? Uh, well, I'm going back to Washington because we've got some really important votes. Um, uh, not only I'm on the defense authorization with more discussions about Iran and the president getting us so close to war, uh, but also uh, we are going to be uh, talking about the border funding and make sure that gets done. Well, Senator Klobuchar, thanks for stopping Thank by. You. Safe travels. We'll Thank see you, you soon. All righty. Thanks. Elaine, I know we're standing by to possibly speak with... Uh, where'd he go? <laughs> well, we'll have somebody for you shortly, Elaine. <laughs> right. Ed O'Keefe, the intrepid Ed O'Keefe for us, Ed, thank you. Um, um, Molly, let me ask mm -hmm. you, interesting to hear Senator Klobuchar raise that moment. Mm -hmm. I imagine that there were some women who were watching whose ears perhaps perked up at that as well, well Democratic well, primary voters. Absolutely. I, I mean, you, that, was, that was kind of presumptuous of Governor Inslee. <laughs> I hope I'm not getting out I'm too far ahead of myself by saying that. But, um, but yes, with, and, and tomorrow night we have a bunch of women up there on the mm -hmm. stage. I mean, th this is historic. And, um, you know, if you, if you look at what Amy Klobuchar has done in the Senate in terms of, um, you know, sexual assault, you know, preventing sexual assault, mm -hmm. and a lot of issues that re are related specifically to women, mm -hmm. um, she's really led on those issues, and she's worked with Republicans. A lot of, I mean, and she highlighted this tonight, is about giving that answer about the pharmaceutical industry. She, and, and oh, excuse me, strike that, reverse it. On the answer related to, um, to what, can, what are you going to do for, for more African American women in this mm -hmm. country? And she said, you know, one of the first things I did, I, I, I was the lead sponsor on a bill to, um, you know, increase STEM funding for underprivileged youth, mm -hmm. you know, and it was passed and the president signed it. So she's out there trying to make this case that she does work across the aisle and she mm -hmm. is working on issues that affect people at home in underserved communities. Mm -hmm. And if she can get that, if she can keep making that point with those one-liners, because she really was the queen of the one-liner tonight, <laughs> the foam and the beer. And I mean, it was very, I mean, <laughs> she added some levity to, to the debate stage, but she was also very serious and somber in what she had to say. I think it's interesting um, to me, Leslie, because it just raises this question. If you take a step back for a moment of this dynamic that is different, right? Where you have now in the Democratic field, a number of female candidates and um, frankly, a lot of these male candidates have not had to encounter that dynamic and on a debate stage where it is visible for everyone to see and to kind of pick apart those moments which could be perceived as being somewhat disrespectful by some. Um, you know, that's something that perhaps I'm sure other candidates will be very mindful of, those things. Sure. I mean, certainly Republicans have that challenge. Usually there's one female mm -hmm. on the, on the mm -hmm. stage and they had to deal with, you know, the way their face looks and these just horrible 
mm -hmm. if you remember some of those attacks that came from, from now President Trump. Uh, but what's interesting that, that Klobuchar did so is, is she talked about her record of success in getting it executed, mm -hmm. signed by the president. When you typically think about somebody who's going to be a front runner in a party, they traditionally are governors because they're executives on their level, but they pass education reform, insurance reform, tort reform, just a variety of different things, and they can point to that level of success and say, we can magnify that nationally. She's actually showing, I can do that, and that alone may be one of the biggest advantages she has. Mm -hmm. The difference between Amy Klobuchar, who's a friend, and Joe Biden, who's a friend, is that he enjoys African-American support, the heart and soul mm -hmm. of the Democratic Party, including black women. She, unfortunately, does not have the same experience or reputation in the African-American community. So Joe Biden, to this point, can afford to really run a campaign focus on the true other side, and that's Donald Trump and the Republicans, where Amy Klobuchar is trying to run a general election campaign in the primary, mm -hmm. in which, in order for her to even have a chance of being successful, mm -hmm. she has to find the Southern groove starting in South Carolina and connect with African-American voters, particularly African-American women. And while I get it, she has a tremendous track record of success, I would just caution her and press in the gas in that lane and really reverse course and focus on trying to connect in a way with voters who may not know her as well as voters in another part of the country. Interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting tech because the number one issue amongst Democratic primary voters is who can beat Donald Beating Trump. Beating him. Mm -hmm. And the one tack is I can, I'm stronger than him, I can out insult him, I can, I can I'm yeah. piffier than him, mm -hmm. all of the, take the fight. That's the right. war in tack. Klobuchar is taking another tack and it's not necessarily confronting Trump but it is appealing to voters who might have voted for him, which is a slightly different tack. Mm. It is, I can get stuff done. It doesn't matter. It's progressive in terms of its values, mm -hmm. but it will be, it will get done. I've worked with people on the other side of the aisle to do but, that. Like those never Trump or Republicans. But those, mm -hmm. but those voters may not participate in the Democratic primary. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you have a real challenge. It's one thing to not like Trump right. in a joint right. election and be a never Trumper, but yeah. getting them to vote in but a how Democratic many open primary. Primaries to get are there? I want to know yeah. how many open primaries there are these days. But, but even states. Democrats who whose main issue is can I beat Trump, and they say yeah. I want someone who can appeal to Republicans, and that's what, and they're vote they're Democratic voters. Right. But the the thing the characteristic that they're looking for is. Who can appeal to independent voters? All right. Who's going to win the suburbs? All right. So um, we're going to continue this conversation. They're telling me I have to sneak in a break. <laughs> Coming up.